on May 26, 2018. 30 students from Hochschule Rheinwall embarked on a trip to the heart of the Romanian forests. Are we just taking the yellow path? But only two returns to tell the tale. Just kidding, they all survived. Who doesn't like a baby's butt? And this uh. is their story. <laughs> directly saying that he had feathers but all the other relatives had feathers uh, another one here it's smaller only eight eggs but they are very very well preserved if you look closely you can see the pores and imagine us going to the hospital <laughs> with a, a box with a lot of things to protect the egg and asking the management to allow us <laughs> to use their scanner for a dinosaur egg. Unfortunately, they didn't find anything inside. Can you out and That's the dominant mountain in uh, Hatzig. With every step that you take, you will make the journey 70 million years ago. So, step carefully. Some traces of of some worms that crawl. So uh, there are trace fossils. So the 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 trace that the worm left on, on the in the sand. The volcanoes were around the island, covered by waters. And in the air, its wings uh, it had 14, 16 meters. <laughs> It's a little dark and there's a monster. Monster? With a whole of stories and legends. Someone made up a story that inside the earth there lives a dragon, a monster, who goes outside with the volcanic, volcanic eruption. The panels light up when I, when I move this handle. When they are angry, they spit fire and, and this is the how the volcano It hardened from the outside, inside. An Icelander taking carbon dioxide, injecting it into water, and then pumping it underground into the basalt. And within 400 days, all the carbon had formed an insoluble carbonate in the pores. Carbon sequestration. We just had a beautiful walk up here. There are mountains on about 1,400 meters. And uh, it's just really beautiful. It's calm, there's so many flowers. Just a completely different landscape. There's a small stream that goes down here. Really beautiful country with a lot of potential, I think. I hope that they're going to develop 
sustainable tourism that they don't destroy the beautiful landscape uh, but still um, get the profits from tourists and get the attention especially um, yeah the environment here that doesn't get destroyed But this is nice because for a long time we haven't seen any snow on there and we were wondering why there isn't any snow. But now there is snow and we can see it's really nice because now it's like the, the one of the main times was still melting and like you can see this river here, a tiny one. And it's just straight from, from the snow from the mountains and that's like really clear water and it's really nice. We have visited the salt mines which was like a thousand meters or something. Everything around us was salt basically. It was very interesting, it was very pretty to see because you could see the several layers which have been compressed for thousands and millions of years. And you could see lighter layers which were pretty much pure salt, like 98% salt at least. And then there were darker layers where some impurities were getting in and it just looks a bit zebra-like and, and it's also very transparent, it looks a bit like ice, it's very cool. And you can see like the whole history of the world basically in these kind of sediments, it looks very interesting. You And also we were in, in a salt lake. You couldn't swim because you were just floating up and it doesn't work. But it was really nice and everything was salty, like we just had salt crusts on us. And but also looking at agriculture is interesting because the area around it could be contaminated with too much salt and then you have to think about how to cultivate crops on it without having too much salt in your crop or without them dying because of the salt. I think Romania is going in the right direction. It's a developing country. The industry, the tourism, the agriculture is booming. But people are realizing that uh, we have to go back to nature and to preserve what we have from our ancestors to make a sustainable uh, agriculture and tourism and so on. Actually, I'm pretty optimistic about this. So Germany, where there's a bigger market for organic? Also my concept is uh, to don't spend a lot of money on transport and don't uh, export and to, to give uh, good food for my neighbor. Imagine the life like, like a clock. Mm -hmm. And every step, for example, at one o'clock, it's a minute five or five years to listen. Wisdom, maybe? Wisdom, uh, wisdom is uh, at uh, 12. <laughs> <laughs> So they decided to bring mineral ore. Most of the ore came as poly complex sulfides. To burn these sulfides in order to obtain oxides. And these oxides may be reduced by use of carbon to, let's say, a pure metal. They produce, produce, produce. And after the, let's say, revolution, people begin to be aware about the problems caused by these two factories. Because you know about sustainability, you know, sustainable development, one condition for something to be sustainable is the community acceptance. I think um, these small particles of soot are for your lungs really not healthy, that's clear, but if you have a high pollution from this other factory of lead and mercury and cadmium and whatever uh, they had there, then it's really problematic for the agricultural activities in this area because these heavy metals might be in the products there. This is what they uh, try to do, try to deal with at least even if you have not really a chance to clean it up.
It was difficult times. I was six years old, but I still remember what it was like to live in those days. Not having enough food, only maybe once a month meat. Uh, being in a, such a big crowd and I was such a small kid and there were people <laughs> pushing me from all over the place and I was screaming for my mother. I, I, that was a line for bread, actually. I, re I still remember. We had barely any dairy products. You would have to stand in line for hours. We were lucky if you did get them because uh, they would only give you one liter of milk per week and two eggs per person, that is. But we still grew up. Uh, we are uh, happy and healthy now that it's <laughs> over. <laughs> People see the potential of Romania, it's definitely, but yeah, they need a lot of work, probably.